I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to bust five top myths about PCOS. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people with PCOS for over 15 years. And today I want you to learn more about PCOS and bust some very common myths. Thank you for being here today. It's important to hear from you. Please like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, um, misconceptions that you might have about PCOS, and let me know other things that you wanna learn about. I wanna help you, I'm here to educate. First of all, what is PCOS? PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's so common. It impacts one in 10 reproductive age women. It is a hormonal imbalance that is most often associated with irregular and unproductive predictable menstrual cycles. Um, PCOS is not black and white. It is sometimes easy to miss, sometimes difficult to diagnose. A lot of people don't have all of the strict criteria. I think of PCOS as a spectrum, but it's most commonly associated with three things. Number one, irregular and unpredictable menstrual cycles, which are due to irregular and unpredictable ovulation. Number two, signs of a predominance of male hormones, um, high androgens, which are, everybody has male and female hormones, but people with PCOS have a tendency towards having higher levels of androgens or male hormones that can be seen in blood work, but it also can be seen clinically with acne or um, extra hair growth, specifically in a male pattern. So like thick hairs on the chin or mustache centrally, like in between the breast thighs. And then sometimes people get male pattern baldness. So they get receding hairline, a little bit of baldness at the temple. That can be a sign of PCOS. Also, people will have lots and lots of eggs that are up for grabs. So people with PCOS will have what's called PCOS appearing ovaries on ultrasound. And that just means that there's lots and lots of follicles that are kind of in this intermediate phase that are trying to ovulate and trying to um, get recruited, um, but they have a high number of resting follicles, sometimes a high AMH level or anti-malarian hormone. So that is a very brief overview of what PCOS is, but it is so common and it is so misunderstood. Today, I wanna to focus on five common myths associated with PCOS and I want to bust them. Myth number one, if I have PCOS, I can't have a baby. This is not true. And I cannot tell you how many people have come to me in my practice saying I was as soon as I was told I had PCOS, I was told that I was going to be infertile and not have a baby. And this is not true. Not everybody with PCOS has infertility. Um, it makes sense that yes, if you are not ovulating on a regular basis, if you're having unpredictable menstrual cycles, um, sometimes people with PCOS only have two or three menstrual cycles in a year, and you really need to ovulate in order to get a period. And if you aren't ovulating, it's hard to get pregnant. You have to release an egg to meet the sperm, to turn into an embryo, to implant, to be a baby. So yes, people with PCOS can take longer to conceive. They can have fertility issues, but it is not an absolute statement that somebody with PCOS is going to be infertile and stop telling people who have PCOS that they can't have a baby because that's not true. Maybe they might need a little bit of help, but don't make assumptions and ask for help. Also, if you are trying to conceive and you are not having periods, talk to your doctor. I had Karen Jeffries from Hilariously Infertile on the first episode of my podcast, Baby Robust. And first of all, she had me laughing through the whole episode, but she really talked about how when she was ready to to start trying, she wasn't getting periods and she just assumed that she was pregnant. She didn't understand what was happening. And she waited months and months and months to figure out what was going on. She didn't get diagnosed with PCOS until later in life. And she wished that she had seen a fertility doctor sooner. So if you're not having regular cycles, if you have been diagnosed with PCOS when you were young, you're planning to start your family, see a reproductive endocrinologist, a fertility doctor like me sooner rather than later. It doesn't mean that you have to have treatment, but you might want to get a checkup and see if you need a little bit of help. Myth number two, birth control pills cause PCOS. Not true. Okay. So the way this myth got started is that when people are ready to start their family and they're on birth control pills, they stop the pills in order 
to stop contraception so that they can get pregnant and have a baby. And then they, if they're not getting regular menstrual cycles, they're not ovulating, they go to the doctor and they figure out and get diagnosed with PCOS because that's the most common cause of irregular ovulation and irregular periods. People can assume or can even read on the internet that it was the birth control pills that caused their PCOS. This is not true. Birth control pills can mask symptoms that can lead to a diagnosis of PCOS, but birth control pills do not cause PCOS. So a really common story is someone starts birth control pills young in their teens and their twenties, whether it's for contraception or very often they get started on birth control pills because they have irregular menstrual cycles. Nobody diagnosed the PCOS, but they just said, oh, you're having irregular cycles. Here, take a birth control pill. You'll have regular cycles. Everything will be fine. So birth control pills are actually great for PCOS because they um, keep the uterus healthy. You know, if you have regular periods, you don't have to have a period every month. Talk to your doctor about what's right for you, but regular periods can prevent uterine cancer. So that's good. Um, they can even out the hormones. So if someone's suffering from acne, um, or the extra hair growth or sort of the male dominated hormone side effects associated with PCOS, they could go on birth control pills and that can often clear up the acne. Um, there's other things to talk to your doctor about, but I'm just saying like very often people have these symptoms from PCOS go on the pills and their periods are regular and their acne clears up. This is great. But all of those things come back when they stop them and they're ready to get pregnant. Um, the bleeds that you have when you're taking birth control pills are not from ovulation. So the way the regular menstrual cycle works is it takes two weeks to recruit an egg, you ovulate it. And then if you're not pregnant two weeks later, the ovaries stop making the estrogen and progesterone and that signals the uterus to shed and to have a period. And so if you're not ovulating, then your uterine lining doesn't get the signal that it should bleed. And so the bleeding is not regular and predictable and monthly, but with birth control pills, your ovaries aren't working. They are quiet. That's why you don't get pregnant on birth control pills because they're, you're not ovulating. And so if you're not ovulating or releasing an egg, you can't get pregnant. But the bleeds that you're having are because the birth control pill is showing your uterine lining, estrogen and progesterone. And then in that week in the birth control pill pack where it's a different color, there's sugar pills, placebo pills, there's no hormones in that um, placebo pill week that that's when you get a period. Okay. So you can imagine if you're used to having a monthly period and you've been on the pills, you stop the pills because you're ready to start ovulating, ready to have a baby, and then you're not getting your period or it's becoming, or it's coming really irregularly and you get diagnosed with PCOS, you can put those two things together, but the pills were masking the symptoms that could have told you you had PCOS sooner. The pills don't cause PCOS. I hope that helps. Myth number three, PCOS is my fault. Stop. This is not true. It is a medical condition. It is a hormone imbalance. Um, we're still learning a lot about PCOS, but it can be related to, um, you know, genetics. It can be related to metabolic communication in your body. Um, sometimes people will see symptoms change with like putting on weight, taking weight off. Um, sometimes people will see a change in symptoms with nutrition and exercise and movement, but that's not to say that PCOS is someone's fault. And so don't fall into that spiral of self blame and worry and feeling like this condition is something that you did wrong. It's nothing that you did when you were younger. It's not your fault. And let's just end that myth. Myth number four, everyone with PCOS is overweight. Not true. So when you look in a textbook and you're learning about PCOS and looking at common signs and symptoms, it's often mentioned that people with PCOS could be overweight and have a difficult time losing weight. And that is true for some people. Um, there's a relationship with insulin resistance and tendencies for different metabolic needs with PCOS. And so some people will be overweight with PCOS, but you can't 
you know, diagnose someone based on that. And there are people that are kind of, it's not really a medical term, but people will say, oh, she's a thin PCOS, meaning like, you know, very thin, um, not having issues with insulin resistance or high blood sugars or not having a metabolic issue, but still has the irregular ovulation leading to irregular and unpredictable menstrual cycles and the high male hormones or acne or in the lots and lots of eggs, you know, in the ovaries. So people can meet the diagnosis of PCOS without being overweight. And so I have definitely had patients who have all the symptoms and signs of PCOS, but they've been told time and time again, that because they're thin, they can't have PCOS. And that is not true. Myth number five, I only have to worry about PCOS when I'm trying to get pregnant. Not true. PCOS is often diagnosed when someone's trying to get pregnant because they're trying to get pregnant and they're not ovulating and they're not having regular cycles. It's hard to time getting pregnant. Um, so they'll go to a doctor and saying, Hey, I'm trying to get pregnant. Then they'll get diagnosed with PCOS. And oftentimes the, both the patient and the provider are just focused on the issue at hand, which is I came to you to start or complete my family and um, help me ovulate, help me get pregnant and have a baby. And then, you know, people miss the counseling about some chronic things that are important to know about with PCOS. So it is important to realize that this is often a lifelong condition. Symptoms can come and go, but people with PCOS have a higher risk of insulin resistance, higher blood sugars, in pregnancy, they have a higher risk of gestational diabetes. And later in life, they have a risk of developing diabetes outright. Um, also a higher risk of some cardiovascular issues, um, some depression, some anxiety, um, some metabolic disorders. And so it's important if you get this diagnosis and of course, starting your family, if that is your main focus, that's fantastic, but be sure to ask your doctor about, Hey, how does PCOS affect me, um, for my overall health? And what about the future? And is there anything that I should look into, um, to make sure that I'm as healthy as possible for the rest of my life? You know, let's recap those five myths. So today we busted five important myths about PCOS. Number one, just because you have PCOS does not mean you're going to be infertile. Number two, birth control pills do not cause PCOS. Number three, PCOS is not your fault. Number four, not all people with PCOS are going to be overweight. Number five, PCOS is not just about getting pregnant and being fertile. It can affect other parts of your health and it's important to talk to your doctor about this. I hope this video is helpful for you. I hope you learned a lot more about PCOS and some incredible myths and misinformation that are out there. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, subscribe to this channel to learn more. Make sure you ring that bell so you get notified when my next video is available and stick around for more learning.